Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. And we've got an Austrian man. It's Tony Polster. Oh, Ooh. legendary. What a hairdo. Collect what? surveys. Proper um, curly hair. Brilliant, brilliant mullet. Brilliant. Mullet. Uh, he's born on the 10th of March, 1964. Oh, just three and a bit years before the summer of love. Easy one, easy one. Cheers that, mate. One of Austria's finest players. And their national team's greatest goal scorer ever. 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 Exactly. And obviously Austria were a very big contributor to to international football, especially in like, the 30s. And that was Cinderella. Cinderella and the Wonder Team and that sort of thing. So. All that kind of crap, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Respectful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They're in the hall of fame. Revolutionised football. <laughs> the Vienna coffee shop culture. All that crap. <laughs> That would seem to look fun. Uh, <laughs> um, he was a product of um, uh, the uh, Austria Vienna Vienna youth system and went to score many many goals for the first team. He made his debut at the age of eighteen uh, for Vienna and he had a fruitful time there. It's safe to say three league titles, three uh, Austrian Bundesliga top goal scorer awards, one Austrian cup, and one European Golden Shoe in nineteen eighty seven. Brilliant mm. Golden Shoe, Jim. In that season, he scored 39 goals. Um, his league record in Austria is 119 goals in 147 matches. Can't argue with that, can you? you wouldn't, it's would you? well above the <coughs> acceptable Dean Windass Hall of Fame standard ratio. Apart from with Dean Windass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This means, the exception that proves the rule. This means nothing to me or Vienna. Get on his international career. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he made his, uh, his debut for the national side shortly after uh, starting for Vienna in 1982 scoring against Turkey immediately although he'd have to immediately. wait immediately yeah. immediately well, like from his <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he had typical to, uh, Austrian official oh no it doesn't work um, uh, <laughs> um, he had to wait three more years for his next international goal but continued uh, to score throughout the 80s with Austria now uh, due to his goal scoring exploits at club level he earned him a move to Serie A with Torino which won just there for one season did okay but um, it was with his next side Sevilla in La Liga where he really started to to score lots of goals again uh, in three seasons in, in southern Spain bagged over 50 goals um, now it was during his time uh, at Sevilla that he played at Italian 90 uh, his, uh, his goals helped uh, Australia, uh, Austria not Australia that's uh, dumb and dumber-esque um, <laughs> his goals helped them qualify including a hat-trick in their qualification group against East Germany I remember in that group stage Austria in a group with USA yep. Italy, Italy Czechoslovakia and, and Andres Ogris scored an absolute beauty Ran from his own half. Was that um, he dinked it? Did he? Or yeah, he dinked it at the end. I'd like to think Tony Polster, if he was playing, I haven't checked, mm -hmm. uh, made the uh, run to take the defender out of the way. Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give him credit. Austria didn't fare too well um, in Italy and went out in the first round. The big man didn't score one. Hmm. Would he be disappointed with that, Marcus? He would be disappointed with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, a year after the World Cup, he um, moved uh, after a successful period with Sevilla to another Spanish side, La Grognes, and scored goals for them. A year later, he went to Rayo Vallecano, scoring goals there as well. And after five years That's in Spain, uh, Pete's, um, Pete's Spanish team. Oh yeah, yes. Rai Vallecano. Yeah, give him a nod. A little nod there to Pete's team. Um, after uh, five years in Spain, where he was uh, always a big fan favourite, he moved to Germany to play for Cologne and enjoyed a lovely spell there too, Jim. Um, now, it was funny when he went to Germany, he was deemed too slow, a little bit overweight, and at uh, nearly 30, the German press was saying his best years are behind but him. But I can imagine they generally approved of his haircut. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a mullet. There was no Strong hair. I think they're probably a bit wary of Austrians coming over. <laughs> trying to be successful in you know, their own ways naughty um, uh, in his first season he was only one goal behind league top goal scorers Tony Eboa and Stefan Kuntz come on eh? oh. what a triple oh, <laughs> that makes me feel young and old yeah. um, uh, he, he didn't score um, in Cologne's first four matches of that season but then scored four braces in six games that's <laughs> brilliant which, uh, which was the start of his um, nickname Twin Pack Polster lovely <laughs> but that's, that's in Germany or in German that would be Doppel Pack Polster Oh, yeah, which is wonderful. <laughs> Twin back bolster. Come on. Every time we get some one of those, it always reminds me of what we always say, which is that English players' nicknames are rubbish. They are, yeah. they absolutely are. Um, the following season, he uh, finished second, did the goal scoring charts again, proving he was a proper poacher. Um, his third season it blighted with injuries um, and the German press finally thought that age had caught up with him and he was now over the hill however in his fourth season he was back 21 goals and 32 games yeah. <laughs> shove that right Obviously. try and over the hill me <laughs> yeah, exactly he's a real hero with the Cologne faithful and has been really ever since um, that season Cologne did find themselves in a relegation fight towards the end of the season they were in trouble they needed a saviour 
Polster went on a scoring spree, scoring <laughs> nine goals in four games <laughs> and steered them to safety. And so, what are you worried about? Yeah. <laughs> Tony Golster, more like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Double pack Golster. Yeah, Lolster. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, Seriously, though, Cologne is a lovely part of the world. It is, Lalonne. Um, unfortunately for him. <laughs> Someone rein him in. <laughs> Sorry, the, following, Colonel Kurt. the following season, they were relegated. Right. Oh. Stop your laughter now. Um, he then joined Borussia Munchen Gladbach. Sorry, <laughs> I wanted to say Mochen and Munchen. Um, and they were relegated too. But in between those clubs, he did play at France '98. Didn't relegate anyone there. <laughs> he didn't, no, they didn't. Um, at France '98. Uh, he scored seven goals in qualifying. He scored against Cameroon in that he game. Scored, as well, in that as well. He did indeed. Um, uh, it, it's worth saying that in '96 he broke uh, Hans Krankel's record for Austria in '96. Who's but some people would suggest he's Austria's greatest ever player yeah. Sindelar might have an issue with that but uh, um, in the summer of 98 um, he went to the World Cup and he hadn't scored a major tournament previously so he did get his goal against Cameroon in, in the last minute um, Austria went out in the first round they drew two lost one and were edged out um, by uh, Chile by a point for a place in the second round but um, it was nice for, for Pulse to get his goal at the World Cup because that was his last goal for the um, the national side he, he, his record is um, played 98 and scored 44 44 bad. goals for that club, for that him. team as well Good it's yeah. absolutely superb yeah for sure it really is because I mean officer have never been you know not for years uh, one of the big sides you know um, and he was he was given a farewell match against Iran two years later which was quite nice why he, Iran? He, I, I just, why not yeah yeah. Uh, he finished playing in 2000 having returned to the Austrian League with Salzburg for a, a brief stint now another string to his bow is that he sings and he's been involved in musical projects is he in a band with Slavon Bilic I knew, mm. gonna, I knew Bilic was going to get mentioned yeah. <laughs> which is why you did this correct well <laughs> he did say about it, he said I take music very seriously and I think those who listen to my music realise that <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning people scoffed at the idea but now people come to my concerts and are amazed <laughs> <laughs> Humble. It's just humble. Yeah. It's yeah. like he's in Muse or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's his band called? I, no, I, I think he's involved. He lends his voice and, and does a few bits and pieces of his own. He does mm. have a band. Well, I think no. I think he teamed up with the band. I don't know if he's in there. It's apparently yeah. called Act. Is it teaming Lieber, up with a band? I'm not joining band. a band. I'm not sure if he's in that band though. Oh, okay. Right. He might have been. Um, You're the demon of the fame master, so you know better. Yeah. How do you chuck a man like that out of your band? Get yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, your mullet's 280s yeah. people think we're a Europe covers band <laughs> do we have a sort of Dean Windows Hall of Fame band yet if Billy, we, have we got enough musical members Billy, no but Billy's it's not, not in there. there I don't think we have mate Hold oh on. no well, no, he is because um, Croatia 98 is Ga- oh yeah there you go. <laughs> is Gareth Ainsworth in there <laughs> he, he, he plays a bit Dublin Dublin Claudio can ease you Brian Clough love belted out the Sinatra classic so we'll go for it it's a hell of a band in there somewhere brilliant yeah but he's coming into Dean Windows Hall of Fame <laughs> Sorry, Gold. <laughs> Can't believe that wasn't his nickname, Gold. Yeah. yeah, big thanks to uh, Christian uh, Niari uh, who did a great piece on Polster. A lot of that information from from him.